Hi folks. Uh, due to some changes in the uh, user interface for the verbal configuration tool or setup tool, um, I'm just going to run through how to do the um, virtual detents again because the uh, user interface has changed this and it's slightly different looking now, so it might be a little bit confusing. So let's load it up. I'm using a 2020 12 11 version of the software. Okay, so here's my throttle selected. The first thing to do is you're going to need to pick a button. Um, a button on your device that you're going to pick to use to control this function. So, there we go. Button 3 will do for me because that's a nice handy one. So, first thing I want to do is I'm going to physically unlock the left and right handles. So, as I can move independently, as you can see here, that is the right one I'm moving, that is the left. So that's axis one and axis two on this list. Okay, so here is our control setup here for our axis detents, and that is axis one, which is our left. So we'll set up that one first. Now we have multiple drop downs. We're gonna go for the basic setup here. So it's virtual hold off. We pick our values. So this is what it's gonna clamp at. It's 80% and five. Then we put our button identifier in here, which is three, and then select a mode, which is on. So what it's basically gonna do is it's gonna clamp axis one between 80 and 5%, even though it might physically be outside those values, it might be at 100%, but it's only ever gonna go to 80, until I press button three. So let's save that back to the device and show you this in operation. Okay, so my left axis is all the way back at 0%, but up here it's showing 5%, okay? So what this is basically gonna do, it's gonna clamp it between these two ranges. I push it all the way forward to 100% physically, but it's still clamping at 80. So you're gonna go, what is the point in this? Well, this allows you to use your throttle and control your afterburner better in some aircraft, for example, in DCS, some of the aircraft afterburners kick past 80%, uh, in which case is that it would be quite difficult to physically move at the exactly 80%. I mean, the Russian aircraft aren't so bad. The 33, SE-33 or 27 has a little light on the, the cockpit that illuminates when afterburner is active. So it's very easy to, to push it forward until you know, that light just lights and then you pull it back a wee notch and you know you're going maximum thrust without your afterburner going and burning like crazy through your fuel. So this method here allows you to control your afterburner better on aircraft that don't have a visual indicator. So all the way back, all the way forward, and you can see it's clamping. So what's the deal here? Well, if I push it all the way forward to 100% physically and then press that button three that I configured, she suddenly goes to 100%. Now, if I pull this back slowly, let's go to about, say, 82, right? And then push it forward. It'll still go to 100. Once I drop below 80, as I do now, right, 78, and I push it all the way forward, it's it, the clamping becomes active again. So that's how it basically works. It, it allows you to control the range of percentages sent to windows based on this control button. Now, if I take it all the way back, it clamps out at 5% now, and if I press that button, now I'm not just tapping, pressing the button once, I'm not holding it. And there you go. So that is how to set up the, a, um, the virtual hold off mode on this. So we've covered the um, virtual hold off mode and I'll quickly run through what the virtual hold on one is. Um, basically what it means is that instead of the button having to be tapped and just pressed once to unlock the full range, you have to actually hold it. So we'll set it to on, 
Let's edit it on. Uh, over here, by the way, you have these LED controls, but to be frank with you, I don't think they're actually that useful, being that they're triggered on this button, whatever button you happen to have here, um, being uh, depressed. Um, but I'll show you anyway. This is I'll just set this up. I'm going to go to all RGB, set it to red. Same here. Go for red again. And I'll just save that back. Okay, so I'm going to pull both, both throttle handles are currently unlocked. I'll pull them, I'll lock them and pull them both back. And as before, you can see the clamping is happening between 5 and 80 on both axes. So um, if I press and hold the button down, that's button 3, two things happen. One, it unlocks and removes the clamping, so now it can move the full range. And two, the LEDs on my um, throttle have lit up red. As soon as I take my finger off the button and release it, then the clamping goes active again. So that's the basic difference. I find the other mode, the virtual um, off one, to be probably more useful because you tap the button once, wang the throttle all the way forward, your afterburner's going. And then as soon as you pull back through that afterburner percentage and it clamps again, um, then it stops you from activating it again until you press the button. Um, I probably wouldn't want to be having to hold a button down in combat if I'm flying a jet and trying to, like, you know, shoot some other guy down or something. So that covers the, um, the virtual ones. Now, I will touch on the fact that there are other ones here, these physical ones, and these are designed for... Um, if you have actual physical detents and it allows you to tune your axis range to where your um, your physical detents are I don't use them so uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really go into that so anyway I hope this helps you This is a sort of postscript to the end of this. I just remembered. I thought I'd record this now while I've got all this set up. Um, one thing that's very, very useful about the newer versions, and there is some uh, capability in this now, is that you can actually load configurations using command line parameters. So basically, you can call this exe and pass it parameters for devices and configuration files to use. I'll cover this in another tutorial, but the good thing is, is if you fly, for example, multiple aircraft in DCS, you'll notice that these afterburner D10 percentages are kind of all over the show. Um, some are at 80, some are at 90, you know, it varies depending on what aircraft you're flying. With the ability to load profiles on the fly, so to speak, you can have a, a, a battery of profiles set up for different um, virtual detents. Say, you know, one at 80, one at 90 or something like that. You could call it, you know, like, I don't know, F-18 or F-16, whatever. Um, and then you could actually load them without having to load this program by just double-clicking a wee link on your desktop. So I'll cover that probably in another tutorial at some point. Now, it's a um, work-in-progress type feature. It's based on, basically, manual import and export of profiles the way you would just, you know, click here. Only it just... Once you pass the parameters in the file, it'll just do it itself. So I just thought I'd mention that.